Nate, we're going, man. We're good now. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. I yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. How's uh? Well, how long have you been home for? Uh, I got home uh, after the bubble. I went to Toronto just because I didn't want to do a quarantine. So I just went to Toronto for oh, like yeah. a month and a half. Train there. Um, skated there a little bit. And I got back, I think, November 15th. So I did my two weeks. And I mean, then uh, I was excited to go to you with my some of the boys and do some things but I'm go gonna, where do you go where are you like go to vegas or something no 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 here just in hell oh, just come here yeah just out of quarantine right like yeah 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 i think my first day out of quarantine was like a saturday so i was gonna <laughs> go to eat and maybe have a beer or something but you can't even do it no so i'm just hanging i got a gym at my house so working out there so yeah. that hasn't been an issue but um uh, yeah so it's been good i'm just gonna get to the point man like yeah you're arguably the best hockey player in the world there's millions of people that play hockey or maybe hundreds of thousands i don't even know but how does that feel when I say that? I go, what sits with you? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, my whole life, I just wanted to make it to the NHL. Yeah. Um, you know, my goal wasn't to be the best player in the NHL. I think that, uh, you know, my goal, my third or fourth season, was to try to be the best version of myself. Um, and honestly, man, I, you know, I was a decent player my first couple of years, but I never thought I would get to this level. I never, really? I never did. I never, I never thought I could get here, uh, which is crazy looking back that uh, that's my mindset, but I just kind of got rolling my fifth season. I was, I think I was like 22, um, changed a lot of things, uh, you know, off ice, you know, on ice mentality, things like that. And yeah, you know, I'm in a good place and still trying to get better, feeling better every year. It's crazy. Like the when we were watching the bubble hockey this year in the playoffs, it was great to see you and Graves, some local boys. And yeah. in my opinion, you took your game to a whole another level. You know, it was incredible to watch you and seeing some of the things that you were doing, the the way you were thinking the game, the pace that you were playing the game. What brought that out of you? You know, in my opinion, I thought, okay, you know, it's a guy who's surrounded by hockey 24-7 because he's in the bubble. He can't leave. Always thinking about his hockey. Maybe when you go back to your hotel room, you're on your phone doing whatever. But did being in the bubble almost, I don't know, help you in a way during this playoff run because you were just consumed with hockey for, I don't know, how many days were you in the bubble for? Yeah, at least 30. You know what I mean? Like, does, does that help? Yeah. Or how, how, how did you sit with, like, how did yeah. that go? I don't know. I think. Honestly, just playoffs uh, just bring the best best out of me. Um, I don't think the bubble had an effect on it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if you look at you know other other playoffs I've been in, even growing up, man, like in uh, you know Atlantic Challenge Cups, you know, in, in uh, I think we were in Moncton every year. Yeah. Um, you know, the finals. I always had good nights. And, <laughs> you know, Memorial Cup. I was fired up. You know. In the playoffs, I don't know I just kind of lock in differently. Um, I think you know an 82 game season, it's it's uh, can be overwhelming. You know, you can your mind can wander, and you know it's such a long year. And the but the playoffs is just short. You know, it's game by game. You know, you're just focusing on that night. You know, because it's do or die every night. Yeah. You know? Every game is so huge, and that really excites me. I really love that kind of pressure. And yeah. Um, yeah. So I was I was feeling good for sure. I think no travel helped too. You know, every every game you get to recover fully after every game, I guess. And uh, yeah, we always played like a four or five o'clock game, so I was back at the hotel at like eight or nine. Did you like that four or five o'clock? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's like my that's like perfect for me. Really? I don't nap on game day. You don't nap on game day? No, I can't sleep, man. So is that a known thing? Did I just break that? Uh, no, that's not known. I just broke that. Yeah, man. Unreal. I broke that. <laughs> Didn't even go to journalism I'm not school. Sure that's broke even that. A big news, but, uh, yeah, I just. Like, honestly, it's just because I'm not nervous. I just, I always got to piss during the day. I'm just drinking so much water, so I just can't sleep. So, uh, yeah, 8 o'clock games, it's late. You know, you're up at, like, 8, and yeah. you, know, you might get a little tired, but 5 o'clock, I'm, I'm good. So it's kind of prime. We had, um, we had Tyler Noggle on the podcast maybe three months ago, and he used to, he's the head coach of the St. Mary's men's hockey team, and he had you when you were, I think he said, like, 12, maybe 10, I don't know, 11 years old. I don't know how old you were. And he had you for, like, a summer camp. And you were doing a drill where you had to skate on one leg from one end of the ice to the other end, and it was outside edges. And he said that you messed up a couple times, and instead of getting up and just finishing the drill, you got up, went to the back to start the drill over again, just so you got it right for the whole time. And at 10 years old, most kids would just be like, all right, forget about this, I'm just, I'm whatever. Where do you think that mindset came from at that young of an age? 
Jeez, I don't know, man. I was I was crazy when I was young, for sure. Uh, but where did the craziness come from? I don't know. I, I was just so, you know, I think you have an idol like Sid. You know, for yeah. me, he was eight years older than me, um, which is kind of, you know, his first year in the NHL was, you know, I was 10. So that's kind of like a prime yeah. fan age. Um, you know, I just wanted to make the NHL so bad, and I would do whatever I could. You know, I, my dad would take me to power skating. It was with Nogler and Matt Hill. Um you know, like three days a week at, at the Centennial Yeah. when I was like eight. Um, and we'd get up at like 5 a.m. And my dad worked for CN Rail, so he'd always be up at 4.30 every morning. Yeah. He'd always have to go to work really early. So he'd get get me in the CN truck with the uh, <laughs> with the big, uh, it would like latch onto the railway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, we'd be flying down uh, the road in that. And, um, yeah, like three days a week I would do power skating. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know, man, I just had a good work ethic and you know i think you always just hear about how hard sid worked so that's kind of like what my mindset came from yeah i'm like i gotta try to work as half as hard as sid did you know when he when he was growing up because yeah. he would hear different things and um so that that was huge for me I, to have someone to look up to yeah um you know kind of you know make the path for me how old were you when you know sid kind of came i guess into the media like how when, when were you aware of sid because when sid was with the subways i guess that's when you kind of heard him on the radio every now and then it was definitely Subways. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, you heard about him, I think, even when he was 14, 15. Yeah. He was big. Like, he was, like, the next Gretzky, you know, when he was, like, 15. So, you know, that's that's huge, you know, to hear that. And that's tough on him, too. I mean, I'm sure that was hard on him. Um, but, yeah, he was a, he was definitely a celebrity, for sure. Yeah, he's a big dog. And that's the thing, like, in Cole Harbor, when you have – not even Cole Harbor, just, I guess, in Canada, and you have him out there. It's a great person to look up to and to see a path. Like we had Alex McLean on the other day, East Coast Lifestyle, and you know a lot of people looked at him in the the clothing brand. He kind of set the trend. He set the way. And you know I look at Sid. He's like, okay, he's that kind of that guy that came out of here and made it to that level of. I'm not comparing Alex to Nate or to Sid, but you know it's the the, the pioneer of a person who went mm -hmm. through and kind of made it to that level out of Nova Scotia. It's just kind of cool to see, and then, you know, you're right there behind him, and you get to see a pathway. I know it's been beaten like a dead horse. Everyone talks about it, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, it's meant to be almost. Yeah. It's great. No, it's true, though. I mean, heard my heard the comparisons my whole life. Um, you know, I, I definitely get asked a lot, you know, about Sid, and, but I, I, I still don't mind talking about it. It's yeah. true, you know, it's... It definitely helped me. So yeah, um, I heard a cool quote once from uh, it wasn't even a quote; it was just like a conversation with Mike Babcock, and he was back coaching in Detroit, and he was talking about Lindstrom, and he's like, you know, guys who are in the league for this long, eighty-two games, that are able to stay here, they have a routine. You know, eighty-two games that can get boring having oatmeal every morning. You know, at a, in Dallas at a twelve o'clock afternoon game, it gets repetitive, it gets boring. You've played with some amazing players, or you've been surrounded by amazing players. Jerome McGinley, Joe Sackick's your GM. Um, some great hockey minds that are in your life. I think it's really cool what Babcock said about, you know, routine every day, same thing in order to have a long career in the NHL. Do you believe in that or do you like to spice things up and keep it, you know, fresh in order to, to have fun throughout an 82 game season? No, man, you have to, you have to. Same um, routine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to be very, you know, it's harder. I think the hard work, you know, it's a lot harder to be at the top than to stay in the NHL than to actually get there. I think. A lot of guys get there on their talent, yeah. and, and then you know they they're not as dedicated once they do get there. Um, you know you have to make sacrifices even when you're you're in the NHL. You know you have to. I hired a you know a full time guy for my body. You know t for tissue work, joints. So he's in Denver all year long. No way. Yeah. Um, you know there's a nutritionist. You know I got Andy O'Brien, the best trainer in the world. Um, you know, I'm very thankful to have really good people around me. And, and every day, um, you know, there's there's so many things at the rink you need to do. Yeah. It can not be fun, you know. It's it's obviously an amazing, amazing thing we do, but there's tough days like in anything, you know. Obviously, people think it's all, uh, it's like a fairy tale, but yeah. there's tough days, man. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. Obviously, I, I was, uh, you know, definitely blessed with some abilities, but I definitely... Uh, Make, definitely make, trying to make the most of them, you know, yeah. and, and and be dialed and focused for sure. It's cool, you know, like when I go to the, you know, me and Sab, we go to the rink, we play, you know, beer hockey, we have fun, we do everything in life. So if we're stressed about something, we get to go and we get to have fun, have a couple beer in the room with the boys after, and it's a getaway for us. It's not a job for us. But when you go to the rink every day, 
you know, it is a job, but, you know, it's the best job in the world. You, you get to play hockey for a living and make money doing it and do it in front of thousands of fans. Is it still a release for you to go to the rink every day, or do you have to go to the rink every day and go, ah, coach wasn't happy with my forehand face-offs, and I got to yeah. swing a bit lower to, to support my wingers? Like, do you still go to the rink with that every day, or when you go to the rink every day, is, is it a release for you still? Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Some days, and some yeah. days it sucks, man. It sucks. Uh, you lose four or five in a row. You know, you got like a, we have like a leadership group on our team. I think every team has that. There's like five, six guys in it, you know, and we're just, it's just tough meetings, you know, team meetings. Conversations you don't want to have. Yeah. You have to hold guys accountable. You have to hold yourself accountable. You have to have really hard conversations. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And some days you're just, you're just miserable. You know, you lose five, six in a row and you have to rally, you know, you have to be positive. Um, but in other days, you know, you're so honestly, it's not so much a release, man. Like it's, uh, it's, you know, every day, you know, I think you go to the rink, you're just trying to get better. And that's, that's the key. You're just working hard and every day you're trying to get a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely good and bad days, but you know, it's a, it's an awesome job at the end of the day. For How sure. long did it take you to get like comfortable in the room to be, you know, as a 35 year old man sitting next to you? It's like, Hey, yeah. what the fuck are you doing on that shit? Like how long did <laughs> yeah. that take for you? Yeah. Like, how a, long? a while. I mean, I've always been like talkative and stuff, but to actually feel like comfortable Yeah. and like speaking in front of the group. I mean, the last couple of years is only probably when it started, you know? Really? I, yeah, man. I, I mean, I started 18, right? So I just turned 18 my first camp. Like I'm a September birthday. So Oh yeah, you got I was like yeah, two yeah, weeks. Yeah. So I got drafted. I was seventeen. Um, you know, I I was eighteen. I I lived with Shagir my first year, which was really cool. Uh, his wife's from Halifax, so you know, obviously said, played yeah. here. So that helped. But I mean, my teammate. I'm coming from junior with a bunch of you know donkeys to <laughs> you know to grown men with families. You know, it's it's yeah. a lot different. Yeah, um, it's a lot different. So um, I think eighteen to twenty one. You know, I wasn't super comfortable i think i i also wasn't the best player i could have been so that was weighing on me too in what sense though you're 18 like well, how do you mean you're not the best player like well, you're 18 in the nhl what can you expect you well i think there's guys that did a lot better than me from 18 to 21 i could have been a lot better um you know from 21 to 22 uh i definitely took a jump and i i felt more comfortable but i'm still 22 with 38 year olds you know jerome mcginn is in the locker room i'm not gonna start giving speeches brad stewart especially my first couple of years it was we had a very veteran group now we're young yeah and it's pretty loose it's fun but my first few years it was uh you know francois beauchemin daniel briere max talbot uh jg uh you know <laughs> older jerome again yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we had a veteran group so yeah let them do the talking for sure when we have guys on here most of the conversation is, um, you know, first NHL game. It's usually a call up from the A, or it's just an unexpected thing. But you're that first overall guy. You're playing. You know, you're going to be in the lineup. What was the feeling like, first NHL game? Because that was the game. Wa pushed the. Yeah, he went the, crazy. Yeah, did he, he fighting Boudreaux? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything behind that? Did he loosen the boards on purpose? I heard a story that he told the Zamboni guy or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Man. Like, like set the tone. I don't know. That that thing is pretty loose though. You could you could <laughs> smash it down. Um, <laughs> to this day. Yeah, it's just like a little divider because like oh yeah, because the Nuggets play there, so they just take it in and out. Like yeah, the basketball team. But, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Patty. Uh, well, I guess my first game. Um, it just seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, you know, I'm going to my eighth season. Um, you know, it was it was amazing though. I think we won like five six one. It's a great great game. Great game. Um, I think I had a couple assists and it was so fun, man. I remember. You know, I remember everything about that day. It's cr well, what the, like, give it to me. What time did you wake up? What did you have for breakfast? Uh, yeah, I didn't nap, um, <laughs> obviously. I remember, like, in the shower, like, blasting tunes, just, oh. like, fired up. Uh, what do you mean, the shower, like, in the morning? No, like, before the game. Before oh, leaving for you took game. a shower before? Oh, at the hotel? Or no, 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 it was at home, so just oh, at, yeah. like, Jiggy's house. Okay. And he always drove, and, yeah, it was it was awesome, man. And um, We had such a good team that year, won the division. Um, it, was, it was great, so a lot of fun. That's awesome. No, I remember like every time we have a guy come on talk about the first NHL game and it's a call up. It's like, got to the plane. I was in Hershey. I had to get to Montreal last second. But it's nice just knowing. I guess you're going into the situation. You're at Jiggy's house and you can play yeah. a little bit more of a comfortability level. And you know all the guys too because you're at training camp. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't like the man on the team or anything either. I was on the third line. 
uh, third line center, I think I was playing at the time, uh, with Jamie McGinn and Pierre Parento. A uh, couple of couple of great guys are hilarious. I valeted his car at the at a hotel in Halifax. PA Parento? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, his wife's from Moncton or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, he tipped me like fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. He was big dog. He's in that the trip. man. He's the man. Yeah, I drove yeah. him to the spa like three times that did while he? he was at the <laughs> oh, place. Yeah. yeah. Probably looking to sweat it a little bit. <laughs> uh yeah, he's great, man. Uh Ginner. Awesome dude. Like those guys are just like old school guys, like the you know, there's such a such a shift in, you know, the the mentality of, of players now. You yeah. Know? Like when I first got in the league, you know, it was like you land on the road and you go right and like have a few beers. You know, that was like bag the chucker thing. they call it, right? Yeah, yeah. And like you go and you have like a couple beers before dinner and then you have a couple with dinner and you go home or whatever. Yeah. And now it's different, man. Like I get to the hotel, like I'm I'm doing like a flush on my legs, like I'm trying to hydrate as much as I can. No way. It's just very different. Very different from yeah. those eight years yeah from then to now just like the, everyone's so health conscious it's yeah thing. i think the whole world is you know it's not just hockey yeah, that's a good point i think like that's kind of there's so much new information out on on health and um, what things are detrimental to your body and um you know if i'm going to play 24 minutes a night at a at a fast pace i i can't be drinking bud light so <laughs> Gotta stick to the waters. At least you're on the light or Keith's light. That's what Siller <laughs> said when we had Sill yeah, on. I was like, "You want some beer?" He goes, "Oh yeah, we'll just make sure it's Keith's light. It's I training li- season." I listened to that podcast, man. He's he's awesome. When he told the story about Sid, I was like, "Someone's gonna make us take take that down." I thought I was gonna get an unknown call and be like, you got- "What story was that again?" He was uh, they were having a couple beers at his place, and he told Sid that he was only a uh, a half the ice player or something like that. He wasn't a full ice player. Siller said that. Yeah, and he, <laughs> Sid got upset, and he's like, "I was just chirping." And we were just having some yeah. beers at like three in the morning. I was like, "Oh Jesus, all right." <laughs> That's awesome. It was funny though, but no, that's uh, that's awesome to hear the the transition into the first game went well. Now you're yeah. eight years in, and I'd like to think you're 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 a big dog in the league. You got a name for yourself. It's a it's a great story coming from this part of the world, especially seeing a guy like Sid do it, and now you're doing it. Yeah, but I gotta, I got to bring it up, but it's it's that cup factor. Like I, I congrats. Like I don't want to say congrats, but this playoff. Man, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, you took it to a whole nother level. You were so close coming out uh, or almost beating Dallas and then going on to the cup final. Whenever we have guys on here that win championships, any level, novice, ban them. Well, we don't talk to kids from novice, but yeah. any level, Mem Cup, the common theme is good group of guys in the room. You know, the fourth line guy will get along with, you know, the first line guy. You know, if the first line has to take a seat and the fourth line gets double shifted, never happens. But you know the mentality yeah. I'm talking about. Yep. That's the key or that's the common trait to a championship team. Do you think you have that in Colorado right now? Is it just like that one little push in the room? How is it? You said you have a bunch of young guys right now. It's a lot of yeah. fun compared to your first couple of years. I don't know. What's your mindset on the team and the group and uh, and I guess just the mentality of, of the people that you're playing with and going to work with every day? Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, we have that, which is which is awesome. There's no room of sh- issues at all. Um, yeah, everyone gets along really well, and you know, guys also respect each other and hold each other accountable in, in a good way. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone uh, comes to work every day um, on the same page, and you now we feel good, man. I know, you know, we're I guess we're the favorites, whatever this season. Um, I guess it's a shortened year if we ever get this thing going, but. Um, <laughs> You know, we're excited. We're excited. I think um, a big thing, though, is the we need to focus on the process of things. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not going to win a cup in January or to, to start the season or in training camp. We need to take care of training camp, get better every day. I know it's cliche, but it's true. Um, you know, play well every night, grow, fix the things, and hopefully head into the playoffs uh, flying. And, um, yeah, man, it's all about the cup for, for me, and I think guys on the team um, – you know, my first for my first year to now, there's only uh, Gabe and Eric Johnson that are left. No way, just the three of us. I never thought of that. Turnover is crazy, man. In the NHL, like crazy. there's a new call up guy every day now. Yeah, you know, our guys sign and, and leave, so it'd be special to hopefully win one with those guys. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation. I forget who I had the conversation with, but I was talking about macro and micro goals. Obviously, a macro goal for you is to win a cup. And I had this problem with this company. I always think about five years, ten years down the line where I'm going to be at, but I don't think about like a weekly basis of things I'm trying to get better on. Do you think like that, or, or, or do you just go, no, I know where I need to be in a year. I need to be in the cup final. Or do you think on you know a weekly basis, now I, I need to get better at this aspect of whatever I'm doing in life? Definitely. Uh, well, I mean, naturally, my mind wanders for sure. Yeah, you know, I, I'm always thinking about a year, two years ahead. But 
it's it's, it's in the human instinct yeah but yeah. i think you know today takes care of tomorrow you know that, yeah. that kind of mentality and i think it also relaxes you you know because you can you have no control i mean you have some control but you know what you can control today and tomorrow and this week and um that's how i i'd like to live um you know work every you know hard every day try to get better every day and and tomorrow will just happen um will take care of itself and that's the same thing with uh hopefully winning you know for our group and for myself just uh you know think about the present for sure yeah um i want to go back to the moose head days yeah you and me have something in common we both have a goal for the halifax moose heads right, yeah stay humble <laughs> justin do you want to show him the puck it's right behind you or sad it's right there just want to look at it nate oh man how many games did you play five okay they, they sent you down after scoring i know it's man. cam cam looks at me he goes justin it's a it's a great game but a shitty business i go i know right back to junior a I went. uh cape breton okay nice. and i scored against my old billet uh St stephen woodworth he played for cape breton oh yeah woody yeah. you know woody i've met woody yeah. yeah yeah and uh and he was just battling me in front and then trey like trey lewis shot it off my shoulder pad hit my shin pad <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I kicked it in, but whatever, <laughs> it, it, it counted. What a goal. So it was goal. And it was during the, the what are they, what's the game where they wear the blue jerseys? The Battle of Nova Scotia. Okay, sick. Yeah. But I was kind of pissed because I wanted the picture with the jersey, the Moosehead jersey, not yeah. the blue jersey. Yeah. You played in that game because you got called up from Junior A. Oh, I post, I've, I've tagged myself <laughs> in it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> you got to post that, man. You got to post it. You got to post it. Um. But yeah, back in, like, you know, I, I guess the you, you became more known within the public that first year within the Mooseheads. I remember going to a preseason game up in the form, and it was just packed just to see you. I think, was Drew in there your first year tryouts? Because I know... No, he came uh, the Christmas. Christmas. My first year. Halfway That's what it was, yeah. But, you know, you're starting to be in the public eye. You know, you're in the paper every second day. Uh, you're becoming a known name. Do you ever remember having a conversation with your family or, or a media advisor and being like, all right, Nate's life's going to be a little bit different. we got to just kind of control what we say, what we do. Anything like that? No, man. Nothing. Just you just natural, just nothing. went through it? Yeah. I think from around being from around here, it's always, uh, you know, the first thing is just humble. You know, that's kind of what we're all taught, I think, and just work hard and be humble. You know, that's yeah. kind of was instilled in me from my from my parents so they weren't too worried obviously i i wasn't perfect uh, at 16 and 17 but um yeah it wasn't too bad man for no? sure no no I mean, yeah it was, it was just a buzz in halifax those two years me and my buddies got uh or me and my buddy tommy got season tickets we got to watch you and drew at least on the second year on the power play we just got two tickets right there above yeah. it was a great time watching you guys and one thing i had i remember when i played when i was younger sab knows who i'm talking about i'm not going to say his name but we played with a guy who was really good and uh, sometimes I saw the frustration in his eye because he played the game so quicker, he thought it quicker, and almost like you, you, you play the game really quickly and you're a step ahead of everyone. But I found that he needed to take a step back in order to play with everyone else because he thought the game and played the game quicker. Was there ever a point in your career, maybe in junior or in the NHL, where you thought, okay, Nate, i got to maybe take a step back and think, how do I play better with other players? Because you're so quick, some guys can't keep up with you. Was there ever a point where you just sat yourself down and had that conversation? Yeah, I think there's a there's definitely an element to forcing things for yeah. sure. Um, you know, I think uh, when I was younger, when we were down a goal, I just went end to end and scored. You know, and novice and yeah. Pee and stuff and uh, whatever. Um, you know, but even at the Q, you couldn't really do that. You, I, I definitely well, I, I'd argue that. I'd like to argue that a little <laughs> no, bit. <laughs> man, I mean, that's what I try to do. I just try to kind of take over myself, and it wasn't in a selfish way. It was just kind of it was natural. Yeah. Um, I think slowing the game down, using your teammates, you know, making everyone feel good is what I've what I've definitely learned. Especially in the NHL, you need you can't do it by yourself. You need at least one really good player with you, yeah, um, to succeed and make them feel good and feel comfortable. And there's definitely some adjustments to make for sure. How long does it take you to get comfortable, like with Drew on the power play in Halifax? Right away, man. I was gonna say, right great away, answer. Yeah. Right away, like there's no even you know you either have it with a guy you don't you know for the most part you know the, you, i remember with joe it was just it was so natural um the way he sees the game you know he's so intelligent um yeah it was just it was so easy yeah. it was so easy to play with man it was uh it was a treat for sure um you know there's some guys you just you know it's like your twins you just know what they're gonna do you know what you're thinking and it's a cool feeling for sure. Yeah, it was fun to watch. It was a great time in Halifax when you and the boys were going there. Yeah. Um, 
leadership ability. I remember you had high praise for Critchlow when you were here. And, you know, you're kind of in a leadership ability. You're in a leadership role yourself right now. Do you ever remember back to the Moosehead days thinking of, like, Critchlow and what those boys were saying to you? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was a, I don't know. I was hard-headed back then for sure. I just wanted to, I wish I enjoyed my time more, I guess, with the Mooseheads. I, I loved every second of it. Yeah. But even with the Moose, I'm just thinking NHL. I got to get to the NHL yeah. as quick as possible. You but know? did you put that pressure on yourself or do you think other people did? No, I did, man. Did you? I did. Oh, yeah. Like, that was all I wanted from, as it, when I was six, seven years old. Yeah. I just, that's all I thought about. That's like, I was obsessed with the idea of it. Um, so uh, it's crazy. I I only played two years with the Moose as it felt like I played five years. <laughs> you know, it was so awesome. Um, you know, with Cam and Bobby, um, you know, uh, you know, Midge and, and Steve Harley and uh, obviously Dom Ducharme. He'll be a head coach in the NHL soon. I don't know for who, but for for sure, he's brilliant. Um, Learned so much from everybody and. Yeah, I mean, I remember my first year, Travis Randall and, and Critch. Yeah. Uh, we're such good guys. Um, and then my second year, Critch was a 20 my first year, so I roomed with him. Uh, yeah, he uh, <laughs> he jokes. I, I couldn't say – he couldn't say anything to me, but I uh, know I definitely learned a lot from him. Um, you know, he's such a good guy to everybody. He treated everyone with respect, and, and so did Randy. Um, and same thing my second year with Trey and, and, and Forns. <laughs> Fortnite, man, he, uh, those guys were beauties for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you say like, you put pressure on yourself to go to the NHL. I want to talk Mem Cup. There's tons of media coverage over you and Seth Jones. And I'm pretty sure Seth Jones was ranked one going into Mem Cup. Yeah, because of the World Juniors, yeah. Yeah, the, That year correct. of World Juniors, I, I didn't really – I made the team, but I didn't really play. So. Um, yeah. Okay, we were trying to that, figure that out before. That's okay, why, okay, yeah. okay. So was that a little bit of motivation going into that Mem Cup, knowing you were number two? To the yeah, to- yeah, man. I was three on some some list too. Uh, the, it would have like Seth and Joanna and me on some list, and uh, I love that that pissed you off. Oh, man, I love it. it. Drove me crazy. I love it. <laughs> but that that's that goes back to your character now of where you are now. You get pissed off about the little things. Like, yeah, that's, and I think you gotta I, be. I care. I don't really care about lists anymore, like player rankings and stuff. Um, but back then it was, you know, it's a draft year. It was a lot of hype, um, so it definitely bothered me. Um, but it never affected, uh, me and Joe, you know, we always supported each other, even at 17, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, going to the Mem Cup, I think I was like second or third or whatever. And, um, you know, I definitely had that in the back of my mind for sure. I wanted to win with the guys, but at the same time I wanted to to kind of prove a point and, um, yeah, it was still up in the air even after that, you know, Seth is such is an unbelievable defenseman. So if still is, yeah, yeah, still is. I mean, if Colorado took him, there there wouldn't be any problem with it. Still to this day, yeah. But uh, obviously happy with where I'm at. When you were at the Mem Cup, the first game in the Lady Butchered O Canada, what yeah. were you? Yeah. Was the cam Nate? Or was the camera on him? It, yeah. it was on you. Was he laughing? Or, what were you trying to hold back the laugh? Oh man, I, I Wait, forgot about that. Yeah, that was. He was at the game. He was out there in Saskatoon. Did she like mess up the words or? What happened? She messed the words up. The yeah, and saying oh, with her. Yeah. Do you that's, remember that? Yeah, I feel. I mean, now I wouldn't laugh, man. That's <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, sad. lady, if you're listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. She was probably horrified. I remember that. Yeah, I think that was our first game against Portland. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just going. It was YouTube, and or I guess you brought it up to me. I'm on camera. I got. I got airtime. Yeah, he was on camera. Like oh, they were nice, going through, and nice. he was up there. That's man, awesome. It was funny stuff. Yeah. No, man, that's good. Um, toughest rink to play in the NHL. Um, toughest rink. Remember my first couple of years when Chicago was winning cups. Uh, yeah, you guys had a good rivalry. That was tough. That was tough though. Uh, the United Center in 2013 to 2016, 17, they were they were buzzing. Were I mean, they? It's still tough, but um, they were definitely a powerhouse back then. I hope sure. that I hope Detroit kind of steps it up a bit and that rivalry comes back. I remember being on trips in, in Pee Wee with this guy over here and sitting in the restaurant just watching Colorado and yeah. Detroit just go head to head. It would be great. To, I think that's still to this day one of the best rivalries in sports. It was unbelievable what came out of those two things. Those yeah. two teams, I guess. It'd be tough now but cuz uh Detroit's in the east. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah, don't, yeah. We only see them a couple of times a year and uh, yeah. Yeah. So how does it work right now when going back to camp? I see on other people other teams social media there's guys already there at camp. What are you doing? You do uh, I'm going to stay for Christmas. With Family my, man. With, good. Yeah. Um, I've been home for Christmas and since 2011, yeah. so I'm excited just to be home with my family, and uh, I'm going to take off probably Boxing Day or something. So, oh, yeah. 
So yeah. is, there, is, there, is there like regulations you got to go through with the government and things like that? Or you just get on a, like a list and you're good to go? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, man. America, <laughs> they, don't care. they don't care about COVID. So uh, yeah, I'm just be there and hang out in my apartment, not go outside and just be safe. And awesome. Not, not get anything. So I wanted to talk about uh, Kale McCarr. Yeah. I don't want to put pressure on the guy if he's listening to this, but I think he has the opportunity to be one of the greatest defensemen in the game. I know that's high praise for a guy who's only been in the league for two years, but he's one of those guys who's just amazing to watch. A one year he's only been in the league. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, well, he played year. playoffs two yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. one year. Yeah. What so, are you seeing like that the rest of us aren't seeing maybe off the ice or in practice? Like, talk about his skill set. Uh, he's special, man. He's special. Uh, freaky. Um, <laughs> freaky fast. Like it's uh, – his first few steps are insane, man. Um, he, uh, I think he'll he'll win a few Norrises, hundred um, percent. He's got an edge to him too. Yeah, he plays physical. Um, we're so lucky. I remember we came last and got him, and we came last and got the fourth pick. And I was like, oh man, like, you know, I, lo- I love. I think he sure was in Halifax. He went first that year. Yeah, I did. It was like he sure Patrick. Uh, I, I fear who went third. Then we got Kale fourth. Yeah. And I was like, "Who this kid from the AJHL, like Alberta Junior A League?" I'm like, "What is this? Like, who did we just draft?" <laughs> Talking, you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, he looks okay, but like these guys are awful. Like, whatever. Uh, but uh, and then I watched him at World Juniors yeah. in the Christmas time, and I was like, "Oh my god! Like this guy is an absolute stud." Um, yeah, and then he uh, he came in playoffs, and he's such a com- he's quiet, but he's so confident. Like he, yeah, he's got that quiet quiet confidence to him um, that you love. You know, you know that guy's a gamer. He was so good in the playoffs too. So oh, some games he was our best player, man. Like he dominated as a defenseman, which is crazy to do. Um, you know, and as he gets more experience, he'll I think he'll manage the game a little bit better. Um, you know. Some defensemen play like 30 minutes, like smooth and easy, but he plays like 22, 23, and he's flying the whole time. So uh, he'll pick his spots, but no, he's, uh, I think he's already top five defenseman in the league. Oh, well, yeah, he, well he, said. Easily, and uh, I think he'll be number one pretty soon. Well said. Rantanen as well. Man, when Rantanen passed that puck to you on the power play, I think it was against Dallas when he sauced it to you from here to the end of this table, and then you sniped it top right. Like yeah. to to me and to every other guy in this room, that's like holy shit level. But to you, do you see that from him all the time? Like the, the way that happened, just boom, 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 I mean, incredible. We, we, uh, yeah, I mean we practice that every day. Do you know the pass I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, okay. against Dallas. Yeah, yeah. When I came from the wall, like we practice that. You pop up from the center. Makar has the puck. You he gives it to Ranton and then yeah, passes it, just it to you. Yeah, just get some movement going. Yeah. Um, I usually play on the half wall on that side, and yeah. so, so me and Nas will switch. Uh, he'll go to the half wall, kind of go to the mid, his middle spot, just because I'm a righty. It's just a different look. Yeah, you know. Um, and Miko is, is such a good passer. Um, he's like, you know, six four two twenty five, and with, uh, silky, silky hands, man. He's, it's pretty cool to, to see that, like how, how amazing, you know, his vision is. And he's a, he's a moose, you know, he's such a big dude. Uh, and, uh, yeah, an amazing passer. And that was, that was an, a great play. And he was a beast. As, well, you know, people talk about me, but. You know, we had so many guys that were unreal this whole the whole playoffs and um yeah, Miko's special for sure. Well yeah, it goes back to that whole championship mentality. Everyone has to have a role, everyone has to kind yeah. of play into something. So it's good. Like you know, he's an all he's a superstar too in the league, you know, but yeah. it's great that he's able it's almost like Malkin and Crosby. You know, yeah. two guys are just able to share the spotlight. It's cool. Yeah. How many checks are you getting from Colorado? Because I gotta bring up the the scouting thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Cause oh I, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Justin. Well, not either. You got oh all the ju- boys. All yeah. the boys, like seven of them now. Sorry, I, I can't think of them top of my head. But yeah, we got, we got uh, myself. Uh, we got Shane, um, Baron, Steinberg, Steinberg, Liam O'Brien's there now. New Hook. Yeah, New Hook. Am I forgetting anyone? Graves. Graves. Sorry, yeah, Graves yeah. on I the always team. Forget Graves <laughs> too. He's on the freaking team. Um, yeah, man, it's pretty cool. Like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but with with Baron though, I I so during uh, I came home in like March right when the pandemic was going on. Yeah, and uh, I I was skating by myself with just John Greenwood. It was miserable. Like, what do you mean? Well, just like you know, you're by yourself with no goalie, just with a coach. You know, uh, doing just drills. pushing pucks for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, going yeah, around yeah. cones yeah. and you know trying to work really hard, but it's not really fun when you're by yourself on the ice. Uh, and eventually. You know, I was home from like uh, March to June or mid June, so I was home for a long time. 
And then I got Shane out with me. Um, you know, I skate with Shane every summer. He's a great player. And then uh, then Baron came out. Um, he was looking for ice. So John coached Baron with the Mooseheads, John Grimwood. And he was really good. Like, I was like, wow, like, this kid's really good. Like, he's only 18 or 17 or something. And I know he was ranked, like, top 10. And then he had the blood clot. And then he had, yeah. he had some injuries or whatever. Yeah. And, and I was just, like, shooting the shit with Joe on the phone. Like, when are we starting back up? And I'm like, who do you guys like this year in the draft? And, yeah. And uh, I was like, man, like, if, if Baron falls, <laughs> like, take him. Like, he's really good. Like Right-handed defenseman, yeah, too. Yeah, like, you got to take him. Um, he's like, yeah, I'll ask the scouts. Like, he didn't really know much about Baron. And he's like, oh, the scouts love him. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I didn't think it would, it would ever even happen. Who, you're having this conversation with Joe? Yeah. Mr. Sackick, sorry? Yeah, Joe Sackick on the – like, we just – catching up whatever and uh yeah they took him man i was like and then joe said it like i think joe said it like in in the press conference he's like yeah nate skated with him said like to draft him whatever i was like man like can i get a yeah that's what you said you get a check that's what i said yeah. to him like i'm like can i get like a little extra money for yeah. being a scout now what like what is this so it was uh it was great and now he it looks like a steal already man he uh looked like he had a dom dominating uh world junior camp and um it's cool we got three prospects on that team so oh you got new Bo hook and bowen byram too byram yeah that guy's a stud as well yeah man man the future's so bright dude. yeah so yeah. we'll see yeah but it's uh it's cool man to have that many maritimers from here it's crazy have um, you been following the world juniors at all not really no i just see like the updates on the rosters and yeah stuff but um i need a job in colorado man like if you can make <laughs> it happen <laughs> what I do you need you. i got you man what do you uh, need like what's well, what are you looking for, man? Like, um, what are you thinking? Like a color I'm trying guy to think. I'm trying to think of my resume. It could be like in between the glass or something. Break. No, break I can't it do down. that. You can't do that. What about like? Do you need someone to like carry your bags? <laughs> or do I got. You need, like... I got Ian for that, man. He carries all my shit, man. Ian. Ian yeah. can't lift your bags. <laughs> He's too small to lift a bit. Hit the gym a little bit. What about like? Uh... Well, I used to, I used to val I used to valet drive cars. You guys, well, when you pull up to it's called Pepsi Center. Yeah. When you pull up to Pepsi Center, do you park or do you have someone we park, man? So you park, so there's no valet. No valet. No. So Colorado Avalanche need a valet service. Yeah. You hook that up. That probably pays like a hundred thousand a year. <laughs> you know, uh, close maybe, to it. Maybe every ten years you might get a hundred thousand. Well, still, yeah. it's a job, and I'm in Colorado. I can sleep on your couch, and there's talking man, to Mr. Sackick. They want Maritimers, so. It should be easy. All right, valet for the Colorado Avalanche. That looks Done, great man. on a resume. Yeah, man. Oh, that's unreal. <laughs> no, we're definitely going to be coming up as soon as this is over. We started yeah. doing these mic'd up videos and putting them on TikTok, and our general audience is from the States. And we had, like, two kids the other day from Colorado say, hey, do you want his, it was like a high school girl soccer team. They wanted us to fly down to Colorado and mic someone up. Oh, cool. I was like, yeah, unreal. Yeah, we'll come to Colorado when everything's over. That's awesome. You see uh... – do you like to see where people are listening from and stuff? Well, watching. Or watching. But yeah, and it's 75% from the States. Interesting. TikTok. And then 25% from around here. So we'll have kids in like Atlanta be like, do you want to come to my high school basketball practice and okay. mic me up? That's and we're like, yeah, man. if you cover the flight and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, we just, we can't wait for this, this thing yeah. to be done so we can go travel and yeah. do stuff. That's cool, man. Yeah. Definitely come to, to Denver. What's I mean, it like? I've never been. What, what's Denver like? It's cool. It's, uh, it's sunny every day. Um, like L.A.? Yeah, even more. It's like every day it's sunny. Um, you know, you get to see the mountains everywhere. Uh, it's a lot different. It's dry, man. It's really dry. Um, no water or anything. Uh, I miss it for sure being from here in the ocean. Yeah, I was going to say that's middle America, going from Nova Scotia to middle America. Yeah, it's very it? different. Yeah. It's just different. Like, you you know, you have the ocean and lakes here and there. You have the mountains and stuff. But, yeah. like, on a day off, I'm not going to go hiking. You know what I mean? Like, it's a cool to look at, but. You know, I'm just chilling on days off. I'm not going to go exploring the mountains, so I don't really get to experience them that much. And when the season's over, I just come home. So uh, it's cool, though. I, I love Denver for sure. What's the courtside experience like? Oh, it's it's awesome, man. I've uh, I've probably been to I've probably been like six, seven times courtside. Um, yeah, our, our owner hooks me up with tickets, so he's got yeah, like yeah, two yeah. seats, like right yeah. in the center. Uh, so I've seen like Golden State come. Uh, I I always wanted to see LeBron, but never saw him. Saw like Russell Westbrook and KD 
Uh, Westbrook, I think, is my favorite player. So explosive, man. Oh, man, it was awesome. He dunked a few times. It was it was so cool. Those guys are – I'm just happy those guys don't play hockey, man. Uh, oh, the athletic ability. I wouldn't, have a, I wouldn't have a job right now for sure. <laughs> I would not be in the NHL if all those guys wanted to play hockey. They're, they're so special, oh. so big, and it's, uh, it's crazy how athletic they are. It's funny. Like when I played hockey my whole life when I was younger, all I watched was hockey. And then I stopped playing hockey, and then I started to explore other sports. And I think basketball is my favorite sport to watch yeah. right now, just in general. I think it's the most exciting. I know a I lot agree. of guys shit on it that play hockey, like, oh, basketball. I know, like, Whitney's, like, oh, they lay a dunk and it puts a ball in a net. It's not takes nothing, but I, I don't know. No, I, I think it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable what they can do. Yeah, I'd like to see Whit play basketball, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what his jumper looks like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's nuts. Yeah, man. Um, I was going to ask about um, – playmaking ability from Sid that you've learned from him when I asked the question about you had to take a step back and maybe learn how to adjust and play with different players because you think the game quickly you're so quick anything you learned from Sid about playmaking ability because if you ask me I think Sid could play in the NHL at 70 just standing still and passing a puck and getting 50 assists you know what I mean like that guy's playmaking ability is you can't compare it to anyone else so is there any little nuggets you took from him um yeah well I think you pick up things um you know he does things that I could never do. Um, you know, the way he, I think just passes on his backhand and how deceptive he is. Like I, I could do that all I want. I'm never going to be able to do that. Um, that flat blade. Man. Yeah, man. He's got the, he's got the straight, straight blade. And, um, sometimes I'm like, man, how do you shoot with I this know. thing? I'm Did like, Troy make him use that oh, a, as a kid? No, I, I don't know. I don't know the backstory behind it, but he's doing okay with it. Yeah. Like I'm just short- like, I'll like take a stick. I'm like, man, like, how do you shoot with this? Is it heavy? Like, is it flexy? It's well, just, no, the... it's just like stiff and and the blade is kind of straight. And I'm like, you've won like three rockets with this <laughs> thing? I'm like, what? Like, I don't know, man, but it's it's cool. But he's definitely the pa- best passer in the game um, every single year. You can debate. You can't really – I mean, he's been the best player in the league mostly every year too or every year. Um, but you can't really debate the best passer. Um, you know, I think he no. – the way he creates things for his teammates and um i definitely pick up things but i mean we're different players and i definitely uh i guess create in a different way than he does so definitely appreciate the way he does it though yeah there's something also some things that he can learn from you man like you know if you might you don't yeah. maybe you can't agree <laughs> maybe you don't want to agree but uh, i think that you have a, a style of game that's unmatchable in the nhl and i was going to ask a question about you know did you think the the game has changed from when you were 18 to now and I was actually talking to Aiden about this question. And he's like, yeah, it's changed. But because of you, your style of game is so unique and no one else can really match it. Just like Sid's, just like McDavid, you know, just like Gretzky, that it's a unique game that no one can really match. And it kind of sets a, a forefront to where hockey's going. You know, I'm sure there's been hockey schools that have been set after your style of game, the way you're able to get a shot off so quick and close to you. Guys practice that to shoot through a defenseman. You know, it's cool for a guy like yourself to be able to, to, to mold a game. I don't know if you ever think about that, but, you know, there, there's kids out there that are 13 years old trying to mimic what you're doing. You ever think about that? And like the, I don't, I don't want to yeah. say responsibility, but no, I, there's kids out there copying you. Yeah, I don't really think about that, honestly. Um, I like I try to set and be a good role model for, for kids, but, um, you know, I, I guess I just don't think of myself like that. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm just... You just I'm do just it. Nate to me, and you know I do what I do and whatever. But um, I definitely, I definitely love seeing uh, like little hockey kids. Like I really, I I think it's really cool. Um, you know, I remember, you know, all the reps I did as a kid, how many pucks I shot, how dedicated I was, and there's kids out there like that too. And I think it's uh, it's really cool, and um, definitely love giving advice. And some of them don't really don't know what to say. Uh, what do you mean? Like what advice to give? Um, yeah, I know. You know, but I just think the one thing though is just reps. You know, you, you, there's no magic thing. You know, I think sometimes I feel like people just want like a quick, like you know, quick fix. Like what did you do as a kid? Yeah. Well, I just I worked really hard. You know, I I did power skating three days a week yeah. as a ten year old. I shot hundreds of pucks every day. Yeah. You know, things like that. It's just I was on the lake for seven hours a day. You know, seven hours a day. Like on the weekends. You know, I. In elementary school, I'd come home for lunch. I'd eat my lunch on the lake. You'd eat your lunch on the lake. I'd eat dinner on the snowbank. My like. Were your parents pissed or like? No, no it's worth no, it. No, they love like I loved it. I had like a small lake in my backyard, 
it was like it's like 200 meters long so it froze really really quickly oh yeah and i would just be out there all day every day um yeah i'd eat like cold pizza you know i'd have it there and i'd eat it like i would just sit on the whatever where it's shoveled and eat it and keep playing till it's dark and you have friends with you or you're just by yourself yeah yeah there's some friends on the on the street that uh played too so i'd be my, by myself a lot um and i'd also play with other kids and yeah i don't know man i just just loved it street hockey in the summers and the lake in the winter man do you still have the same passion for the game from when you were 18 years old right now um yeah in a different way um i it's just different it's uh you know growing up you just want to make it and now um i just want to stay stay uh at the top of my game or, yeah. and get better it's just a little different you know i'm a i guess i'm a grown man now and yeah. just look at things a little differently but i think when you're young you just so you can get so locked in on something yeah and, and you know that's not just me it's a definitely everybody for sure uh what how much time are we at right now mark uh, okay um you, you're still good for time oh, just yeah, a little man. bit i'm good um when you're on the ice every single day, you know, it's almost like habits develop for themselves. Like when I talk about the games changing and you're developing your own style, you're, you're a different player from when you're 18 to now, but when you're on the ice, how many times do you practice in the NHL throughout the week? Four, like three days a week, four days a week? You got to think about pregame skates yeah, too. Yeah, just depends. You don't practice a ton. Like in the second half of the season, um, you know, and we might play 15 games a month, you know, it's every, it's every other day. So like I might, I might practice like three, four times in a month during that so it's really those pre-game that. skates where you're not even i might not even do that like i'll play on like a saturday and then i might skate i guess yeah i'd go out there sometimes i just go out there i do shots and i work on my hands and i get off before practice starts yeah and that's it um so it's just all about rest so um but in the first half we don't play as much i mean this it won't be the case this season will it's gonna be crazy this season they're gonna they're gonna jam, definitely jam it in but um a lot of rest and recovery and um but yeah man i remember one february there's like 28 days we played 15 games so it's crazy that's assault that's <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> it's tough man you're that's where you know rest and recovery comes in you know that uh come around playoff times you can't be gassed from you know not eating right and, and take care of yourself all season so it's definitely a marathon for sure how do you feel right now i feel great yeah i feel great been uh training hard um in your gym yeah my gym and I'm feeling good for sure. That's good. Oh, you're 25. Yeah, just turned 25 in September. So, is there another like, is there another point, another like level you think you can go? You don't have to answer that. Like, I think you played amazing this year, but as an athlete, you're always looking to get better. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm, yeah, gonna, like, see, I'm gonna see what happens, man. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. I think until I'm done, I'm gonna try to get better. Yeah. I mean, I watched Sid. He's trying to get better at 33. Man. So. Is he still training? Oh yeah, he's a he's an animal. He's a, he's a, he works a lot harder than me, that's for sure. You want to hear a funny story about uh, <laughs> about Sid that you probably don't even know? It. So when I was 16, this is before I was a valet. So I was like 16, maybe 17 years old. I was a, a landscaper, and we were doing his property out there. Okay. And I was mowing his lawn. It was my first day. What's that? What are you making that face? <laughs> it was like my first. What? Big valet job. You love that. It was a great job, man. Yeah. I got a story about you too. You, I valeted your car a couple of times. You're eating at the restaurant. Okay. And I'll tell you your story before Sid's story. Oh, take it easy on me though. This man. is before. Take it easy on me. This is before I, I started the podcast and I was doing yeah. this job at the hotel and I was like, man, I want, I really want to start a podcast. I really want to do this. And I saw you come up and I was like, oh, I'm valeting Nate's car. Sick. Maybe he'll come on the podcast. <laughs> I, I don't even have any episodes, like no episodes, nothing. I'm just like, yeah, maybe I'll ask Nate. So yeah. you're in the restaurant. I'm kind of keeping an eye on you. I'm like, okay, there he is. I think he's having his lunch now. He'll be done soon. So I'm keeping an eye on you i bring up your car and i'm so focused on like this pitch she'd be like hey nate like i'm, I'm dressed in a I'm starting a podcast you want to come on and i'm pretty sure you had a 20 in your hand to tip me and i wasn't even focused on the tip i was so locked in on your eyes to pitch to you yeah and they're just like thanks man appreciate it all and i was like, I, 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 okay see you later <laughs> and the next thing you know you're in your range and you're gone down the street i'm like my life's over <laughs> episode 299 though you're here yeah, it worked man, out here. yeah 299 it, that's perfect I think it's meant to be. So got a little experience under your belt and two ninety nine, man. It's a lot of episodes. Yeah. You've man. been you've been crushing it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um so, so the Sid story, I'm a landscaper, I was young and Andy uh, was training Sid and I'm mowing the lawn. You know, when you're mowing a lawn, it's loud, you can't hear anything. No. And Andy and Sid are training and I hear Andy 
like yelling at Sid. I think he's on maybe not on the squat rack, but he's lifting some heavy weight. And I could hear Andy like pushing Sid to the point, and Sid's just working his ass off. Yeah. And I remember I was mowing the lawn, and you know when you mow a lawn, you're a landscaping company. You got to make sure the lines are straight. You know, it's Sid. Yeah. It's a good contract. And you're everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> this is my first week on the job. Yeah. I'm so pumped to be on Sid's property, looking around. No, no, no. My Ch- boss looks at me. Checking out his quads. So exactly. He's running down the street with his shirt off. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So Andy's yelling at Sid, and then my boss comes at me and starts yelling at me because the yeah. lines are just everywhere. I believe it, man. Now, like, yeah, it happens. Now Andy's trying to hold Sid back. If anything, yeah, guy's uh, guy's crazy. It's a really good part, you know, being from around here and I guess seeing everyone come up. You know, you and Sid leading the way. Now, like we just talked about those guys, Baron coming up. You got New Hook. There's plenty of guys. I'm sorry if I don't mention your name, but there's tons of guys that are coming up after you. It's part of the reason why we started the company. I remember we started, I had a couple podcasts and we're like, oh, okay, we have two guests, but think about the possibility of who we can get over the next couple of years because of all the talent that's coming out of this part of the world. It, it's incredible. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's cool. It seems like it's a lot more possible to make it in like anything now. You know, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel like you're on a bit of an island here. You know, I think growing up, I think it's a lot different now for, for younger kids. Um, they see people succeeding in so many different things in life. Like, like you said, Alex with the clothing and, um, you know, it, you know, TJ Grant, you know, he's from Cole Harbor. He was a UFC contender, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lindell Wigginton, you know, he got yeah. drafted by the Timberwolves in basketball. Yeah. We've got some hockey players. So it's cool, man. There's a, uh, some podcasts. Just, yeah, <laughs> podcasts <laughs> man, yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of different cool things that, uh, people are, can be ex- inspired. And I think it's awesome. Um, outside of hockey, what do you, do you, what do you do? Do you play lacrosse? Like what do you do? Soccer, baseball? What uh, do you do? You do any, like even, did you ever play anything? Um, yeah, I, uh, I actually kayaked as a kid like a mask or uh abenaki and, abenaki yeah. yeah yeah we had regattas against them yeah. yeah 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 so uh it was like a 10 minute walk from my house so i would go there every summer it was like daycare pretty much yeah so. yeah the parents send you there yeah because they were working so I yeah same somewhere. thing yeah yeah so i was there yeah i mean i, I kayaked and uh it was actually a really good workout and they'd also bag you up the hill yeah. and make you run like a few kilometers so I was like, I mean, back then still, I was like, okay, this is great for hockey, you know, conditioning for the season. Yeah. And, uh, so I did that a lot. I played a little soccer, but, um, yeah, man, I, I definitely, uh, mostly hockey for sure. Do you ever go to, uh, what's the, what's the lacrosse team in Colorado called? The Mammoth? The Rapid? Oh, Mammoth, yeah. Mammoth? Mammoth, yeah. Do you ever I've go never, to those games? I've never been to a game, man, but they sell out. They, uh, it's like $10 tickets. It's like pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, they got like. They get like eighteen thousand people going to their games. Thunderbirds too, man. I don't know how many the Metro Center fits, but like, it's popular. Yeah, it's picking up. I never played it. I never played lacrosse growing up. But I'll let you use one of the sticks when, before we go here. I'm probably awful. I'm probably awful. no, man. You'd be surprised. Like hockey players just naturally pick it up. There's a lot of good. I think John Tavares is. Uh, yeah, his uncle was like the best ever. Or something. Yeah, and he played a lot of Ontario guys played for sure. But yeah, I never got into it. But oh, it's a fun sport. Yeah, Do you man. ever like playing in Toronto? That's like kind of the mecca of hockey. A lot of guys say either Montreal or Toronto. Which ones? What are you? What are you? Uh, yeah, I like. I like. Uh, man, they're both awesome. But Toronto, um, it feels like more than just hockey. There, it's kind of like a. It's like a bit of a. I don't know. I guess in Montreal, there's a lot of media too, but it just feels like they just so passionate about hockey and. Yeah. I think Toronto is more about the story. I guess. It's yeah, the build up to it. The build up and the hype, but they're both really cool. It's fun playing in both both buildings and um yeah man chicago is is my favorite the united center is my favorite um but uh toronto montreal up there too get a old deep di- what is it deep dish pizza in chicago before yeah, the game man. sits in you yeah i can't believe you don't nap that's incredible yeah like that's the odd time i might get a half hour in or something but yeah mm-hmm. just hang out so what's the plan for the rest of the day what are you boys doing Sav just mean mugging me over there. So what is this idiot yeah, going to ask next? My bodyguard, man. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, we're going uh, Christmas shopping for our dad, so <laughs> be good. Go to the gym. Go work out. You're looking skinny. <laughs> yeah, check his legs out, man. <laughs> no, man, that's good. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. Like, you know, this is going to help us tremendously, and it's just always great yeah. to be able to talk to you and, and see what you're doing outside of hockey and, I guess, this time off. So Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, man, no worries. Um, yeah, everyone listening, thank you very much for supporting us. Uh, watch Nate on TV. Yeah. We'll keep watching High Button Sports. Yeah, man. Am I missing anything? Should I be saying anything, boys?
Good. Buy merch. We got the merch coming out. You guys are going to come home with some merch right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, shout out High Button, man. Shout out High Button. I love it. All right, everyone listening, thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, We are out. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Thank you.